Hey, what's up? My name's Chad Hermanson. I'm a former Major League Baseball player, first round draft pick, and former scout for the Angels. I wanted to share with you guys today what I would go to look for in a hitter. And now the information I'm going to share with you, it's completely subjective. Uh, it's my opinion. Uh, there's some thoughts that I have about kind of a routine that I would utilize when I'd go watch a hitter uh, at the high school and at the college level. So one of the first things that I would look for is I wanted to see how you carried yourself as a hitter, right? That has nothing to do with hitting, but I wanted to see how you walked around, right? Did you have a little bit of swagger in there? Are you confident? Okay. I want to be able to see like, does this dude believe that he can hit? Okay. I, f I think that is very important. So I I'd watch body language. I'd watch how you would walk around how you would interest in your teammates and your coaches and just kind of see who you are as a person, okay? So that's one of the first things I would look for. One of the next things I would look for is when you go take batting practice, what does that look like for you, okay? Are you the type of hitter, let's say that, I think there's three types of hitters, like you have your singles, contact type hitter, you have a, a doubles, gap to gap type hitter that occasionally hits some homers, and then you have a home run power type hitter, right? That hits homers all the time, uh, is up there to just straight out do damage and has the ability to hit a home run uh, every time up the plate. I think of a guy like uh, Joey Gallo, Stanton, Judge, different athletes like that, okay? Are, so where do you fall in that category? So I think it's very important to know, am I a singles contact hitter? Am I a gap to gap type hitter? Or am I a power hitter that can hit a home run with one, you know, almost every time at bat? I would probably say for the most part, most of you are going to be singles contact hitters and gap to gap type hitters that can occasionally hit homers, okay? So it's important to know who you are because when you get into batting practice, what is your approach? That's what I want to kind of pay attention to is when you're, it's your first round and you you're, do your couple bunts, maybe you get a couple hit and runs, and then it should, for the most part, be line drives to the right side if you're a right-handed hitter, right? You're hitting the ball behind the runner, you work on hitting the ball to right center. Do you have the ability to do that? Or are you just getting in first round and you're trying to hit jacks to left field every time up? Okay, I see this all the time in a showcase, and it's a personal reason why I think showcases are or interesting in that regard where I don't as a scout get a whole lot out of that okay so I want to see if you have an idea and an approach on what you're trying to work on in batting practice if you're trying to hit home runs every single pitch that to me tells me you're not a very disciplined hitter yet especially if you're a hitter that is maybe at best has warning track power and you're trying to jack the ball every time that's, I would say, low IQ and low baseball IQ of not knowing who you are and having that awareness. Okay, so make sure you know who you are, what type of hitter am I, and stay with your strengths there. And for the most part, I would say you're, you're probably a line drive gap to gap hitter um, that maybe you can occasionally hit homers. You know, that's going to be individually for you but know who you are. So I would watch batting practice and kind of see how does the hitter do his first, second, and third round? Is there, is there a pattern? Is there a routine? Does he have good habits in batting practice? I want to see those good habits because if they're solid, then you have a chance to hit in the game. There's a lot of really good batting practice hitters. And a lot of those kids are really crappy in the game. Okay, you probably have seen it yourself. God, this guy hit, hits bombs in BP. In the game, can't touch the ball. Flip a breaking ball, he has no chance. Okay, because there's no approach. There's no discipline uh, within his mindset, his approach, and then the mechanics of the swing. Okay, in regards to the swing itself, okay, I'm just looking for a short, compact swing, something that... The, you're, I, I see that the hands stay inside the ball. I can tell that they're attacking the inside part of the baseball and they're just driving it all over the field, okay? I don't get super, super technical with, you know, what's the back leg doing? What's the back arm doing? 
Um, th those were never in scattering reports to get that specific where we maybe we would have a hitting guy look at that, really break it down on camera. Okay, maybe one or two guys would do that. I didn't really get that deep, but I wanted to see a, a clean swing, something that showed, I call it an ease of operation in regards to, are you trying to swing your max effort 100% on every swing? That's probably not gonna cut it. When you're trying to swing as hard as you can, mechanics break down. I've heard a lot of hitters, really good hitters talk about, they're about 70 to 80% in regards to how hard they swing on that scale of one to 10. So if you're a max effort guy, and again, just trying it homers every single pitch in BP, it doesn't really work for me. You might show some things there, but you better be able to prove it in the game. And if you have high strikeouts with just a couple of homers, again, that will only take you so far. You'll need to make an adjustment. And, and a lot of times at the high school level, college level, that takes some, um, maybe you get benched. <laughs> maybe you, uh, you have to sit a couple games to get to that point. But again, so swing mechanics, obviously that's important. That's probably all you work on in the cage. But if you're playing at the college level, you probably already have a pretty good swing. Okay, that's, you're playing at a higher level. If you're playing in high school at a higher level, same thing, you probably have a pretty good swing. But obviously those things will, will be what you work on and you try to get better at certain movements. Um, I didn't really care where you held your hands, if your stance was open or closed. I, I believe everybody has their own style with how you go about and how you, you do things. So I was totally cool with that as long as you were able to repeat it and that if you knew there were holes in your swing, then I, you could see some adjustments being made there. And maybe I would see you swing um, in the summer a certain way. Maybe your stance was really open and you weren't quite getting closed, so the outside was very vulnerable for you. But then I see you in the fall, you've made some adjustments there, and now you're actually getting to that pitch. So that's awesome, right? That's showing that you have an awareness that I have a hole here, I need to make some adjustments, and maybe that starts from mechanics, stance, approach, and mindset. Okay, so those are some ideas. Not, not too technical with the swing itself, but I just I wanna see the result of line drives. If you're able to do that, and you're getting those results, the swing is just a swing, okay? We all, in a way, we want results um, obviously you want a technical swing to get you those results, but my job is to scout you as a player and to figure out, okay, we got some things and some tools that we can work with here. Okay. Now, from a hitter standpoint too, I want to see like, what is your ability to make adjustments in the plate in regards to, you know, what is your pitch recognition, right? Can you only hit fastballs, but you, you struggle with spin? Right, so breaking ball, if you see sliders, uh, change-ups, you know, can you hit all pitches? You're probably not gonna see all of them at the high school level, you'll start seeing them more in college, but are you only a fastball hitter? Or do you struggle with the fastball but can hit breaking pitches? So maybe your bat speed isn't quite there to get to the higher end velo, let's say 90 plus and above, for example. Okay, so we wanna be able to see can you, can you hit velocity? Can you hit spin? And do you have an idea of what the strike zone is? Do you have an awareness of what you actually can hit within the quadrants of the, of the zone? And do you have that approach to go in and actually hit, hit those pitches? Or are you swinging the balls up here, way down below? Um, no approach at all, essentially. So, well, as a hitter, there are times when you're, you're gonna not be very good. Right, the adversity of the game, you're, you're hitting, you're doing one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing to do in sports. So adversity is there. I know you're gonna have bad games. I know you're gonna probably have some good games in there as well, and it's gonna be a lot of in between. So if you're a prospect, that's why I have to go watch you a lot. Right, I have to go watch a lot of games. I can't just watch two games, but yeah, he can hit. Um, that happens for some scouts, but as an area scout, you wanna be able to have a, some type of history over the years that you know this the as a scout that you can hit 
and I've seen it over the course of years that you just didn't show up your senior year and all of a sudden you're a good hitter. That does happen. It does occasionally happen, but um, typically if you were a really good hitter as a senior, you probably had a really good idea of what you're doing when you were 13 and 14, like freshman, sophomore year. So with that adversity, I want to be able to see how you handle the adversity when you do stink. When you do strike out three times in a game, what does that look like? How do you handle it? Do you shake it off pretty quickly? Or are you one that's gonna pout, that's gonna take it to the field? Okay, that's when we start getting into the mindset and the makeup of you as a player, right? What do you do and how do you react when things don't go your way? Okay, another part that we would look at Getting way deep is the makeup of the player. That's kind of back to the adversity part. Makeup of the player. I'd go into a house, I would talk to you, get to know you, right? Get to know your parents, kind of figure out what's going on in your life. Um, being able to make sure you can answer your, the questions that are given to you, that mom and dad are not answering your questions, that's a big thing, right? So when a, when a coach, a scout, a recruiter asks you questions and they're looking at you, make sure you answer it, not mom or dad. Okay, we, we're recruiting you, we're scouting you. Okay, so we want to get your answer and your thoughts and opinions on that specific question. So those are some of the basic ideas that I look for, right? Looking for the ease of operation. Do you have an approach? Do you know what you're doing in batting practice? Are you able to take that batting practice and that solid approach into the game? And can you actually hit in the game? Okay, that's really the, at the end of it all, can you hit in the game, okay? Yes, we're scouting tools. Yes, we're scouting bat speed, exit velocity, these different numbers that are certainly a big piece of the puzzle now, right? You can have great exit velocity, but you don't know how to hit in the game. You can't hit a breaking ball, right? So what good is the exit velocity if you can't hit the breaking ball? Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that. These are some, some thoughts and comments. Again, this is all subjective. These are all some opinions, some thoughts that have just come out of my mind to share with you. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed that. And I will be making a pitching video uh, to give you, again, some subjective ideas of what I looked for from pitchers when I would go scout them. So thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next video.